Morning folks. I hope you're well. Really getting into the winter swing of things. Cold nights, cold mornings. A lot of rain we've had, a lot of rain. This morning, I'm smoking my Peterson Lestrade Christmas pipe from 2021. Copper band, very nice pipe. Very, very heavy rustication, really gnarly rustication on it. Quite a thick shank and band. And the uh, P of Peterson over here is no longer, at least not on this model, is not a, um, a metal P. It's just a white bit of paint which has come off already. This pipe was, um, I had to modify the, the mortise because uh, the draw was very bad because the, the mortise, in order to accommodate the filter, had to be drilled quite deep. And it's obviously a very, very steep, let me show you. And basically you can see the shape here, essentially you have like a right angle here. So when they drill this, the mortise is drilled right down to there to accommodate the filter. And then they drill again across um, to get the draft hole into the bowl, which means that the draft hole over here is halfway up the mortise. And that makes it difficult to draw. It's a very common problem with bent pipes. Um, and it's why, as I've mentioned many times, why most artisan pipe makers, high grade pipe makers don't make full bent pipes. Some do, but generally you very rarely see a full bent pipe from, I wouldn't say very rarely, but it's not as much as, uh, as other pipes. Most uh, artisan pipes are either straight or slightly bent, quarter bent, that kind of thing. But they're artisan pipes, so they're kind of free form. But if you just follow the, the drill lines, they're basically, I find most of them are around the quarter bent. So you do have some freeform shapes which are full bent even though they don't look like it so for instance the the bone nord ramses that's a full bent pipe although the shape is is different but the essentially it's a full bent pipe and the drilling on that is quite challenging i mean the actual physical drilling of it is not hard but lining it up in an acceptable way that's quite challenging So this one had been drilled very high up on the mortise. So I had to carve a channel from the draft hole um, in the mortise itself to allow smoke to go around the filter and then um, in other words, to come out from the bowl, down the channel and then underneath into the filter before it comes into the mouthpiece. I haven't smoked this pipe for a while and I was actually looking for my other Peterson, the, the Dracula, which I'm not sure where it is. A few of my pipes have, uh, they might, it might still be out in the garage. I took a couple of pipes out while I was working out there. When I was working on the roof, I took a couple of aromatic pipes. So one of them was the shotgun pipe, which I'm not sure where that is. And also the Peterson Dracula, the straight pot. So both of those, I'm not sure where they are right now. And I was gonna take the pot, but I, as I say, I couldn't find it. So um, I took the Lestrade. I didn't wanna sort of always smoke my car pipe every time. So I took the, the, the Lestrade. It's not really a car pipe, it's quite a big pipe, but nevertheless, it clenches well because it's full bent. I 
actually this house here on the right I've done a few photography jobs there although it's a residential house it's, a, it's actually got quite a decent garden and um, the guy who owns the house is uh, quite a philanthropist in terms of fundraising for uh, charitable ventures and he once put on a concert to raise funds for something I can't remember what it was it's going back a good few years now but it was good fun so uh, he used to ask me to photograph his events um, I used to do that quite regularly a few times a year he used to put something on but moved out of the area a few, a few years ago and pretty much don't hear from him anymore. So pipe 801. 800 is going to be the ground pipe. Um, 801. I almost did the honey treatment on that this morning before I came out. I'll tell you a little secret. I actually made that pipe for myself, um, with myself in mind. Um, I know I've always said that. I often say that I want to keep this pipe when I make a pipe, and I want to keep it, and I want to keep it. And that's true with most of the pipes that I make. But this one, I actually set out to make it for myself but I always put the pipe up for a day or so even if it's a pipe that I've made for myself um, and see what happens if it see if it sells then you know what we're in it to make money from it so it's what I put bread on the table with a lot of the time so I figure if it sells it sells and that's just the way it is if it doesn't sell very quickly then it will indeed be mine. Anyway, so this morning I was going to bring it in and smoke it for the first time this morning in this morning's drive, but I resisted the urge. So uh, it'll be around, available, maybe for a little bit this morning, we'll see. These roadworks are just ridiculous. It's now about the fourth or the fifth time in as many months that they've had the road up. It's unbelievable. The same stretch of road. It's, uh, what is this? It's uh, Thames Water, I think. Either Thames Water or British Gas. surfaced this road not long ago and they just rip it up again literally weeks later there's so little coordination between the services okay sometimes you get an emergency there's nothing you can do about it but these this is um, four or five times in like a five six month period it's crazy here is uh, electric car right outside my house despite my many protestations the local authority did not accept my uh, appeals against them putting this uh, electric car bay right outside my house literally and I can be accused of NIMBYism which is not in my backyard is what it stands for an acronym but as I explained to the local authority, I am for having environmentally sound uh, cars. Um, personally, I think hybrids are the way to go. 
but fine, you know, if, if uh, I'm sure it's all going to change again. They're going to say that there's not enough, um, the carbon footprint for everybody to use electric is too high and they'll go back to something else, but or hydrogen will come out and everybody will make money off hydrogen when they're ready for it. Personally, I think hybrids are the way to go. Um, it's, a, it's kind of a happy medium. But um, they put this uh, bay outside of my house and I wrote to the council and I said that, you know, there's a street around the corner where there's no parking, there's no houses with parking spaces that need to park. Why can't you put them there? Um, it's outside the park. There's no parking restrictions. You can put 10 bays there. Why do you have to do it here on an overcrowded street? It's impossible to park here at night. And if you put them in a more central position, it'll serve more streets. Plus, oftentimes I come back late at night with equipment. And if there's no parking, I have to walk through the streets with equipment, which is, I feel unsafe doing that. Didn't even get a response. It took a long time. I had to keep sending letters till I got a response, which was basically in the negative. It really doesn't, it, it defies logic, what they do sometimes. And if there is a logic, at least explain it. These people officially act on our behalf. They're elected officials, and they're officially supposed to, this is what democracy means officially, they're supposed to act on our behalf. So if you're acting on my behalf, at least tell me what you're doing and why you're doing it. And once in a while, take into consideration what your constituents would like to see happen. It is a nightmare parking here at night. There's a scramble every night, and every night when I have to go out and pick up my son from college, I'm always frustrated because I know that I'm, there's a good chance of me losing my space. And there we go. Alright, enough of a rant from me. I'm going to enjoy the rest of this bowl. Catch you on the next one.